Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to episode number five, I think this is, of the live event videography crash course, breaking down everything I know about live event videography from the equipment all the way to how to make this into a full-time job. Essentially, we're gonna be breaking down everything that I've learned in the past year and a half of shooting live events. You know, uh, to, to basically condense this into a short little series on my channel, the full playlist is down below in the description. Without further ado, let's jump into a few different things that have, to say the least, been very helpful to me in my live event videography journey and career over the past year and a half. Number one, don't bring a gimbal or a Steadicam unless the venue is big and you know you have to, all right? So I've shot a bunch of really smaller nightclubs up there in London and these smaller kind of luxury nightclubs, there's so many people cramped into this little basement that when I was trying to operate moving around with a gimbal on me um, and even a Steadicam as well, it was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. I was clutching it by my sides, everything like that. Pretty much not a single time that I've ever tried to use a gimbal or a Steadicam inside a crowded nightclub has it ever improved the video. It's only made my maneuverability throughout the club more tedious and annoying and hard. <laughs> so <laughs> first off, I would suggest you not to actually bring a gimbal or steady cam. but again, uh, depending on the size of the club you're shooting or de depending on the layout of it, for example, if you are coming with an artist to just shoot that artist set or something and you're on stage the entire time, you don't really have to go into the crowd or anything like that, Maybe it could be an all right, uh, you know, setup. Overall, I'm pretty sure it could be an all right setup. But for me, personally, it's never really worked out very well. Honestly, it's never worked out really well. Um, <laughs> number two, add some context and add some narrative to your work. Now, adding some narrative to your work will overall just kind of make it more of a flowing sequential project, right? So it can be a very small amount of narrative. I'm not talking about, you know, you film all your friends jumping out of the taxi and walking up to the to, to the door, although that would be dope, definitely. But something very small, just like a little bit of a kind of pattern to get into the nightclub, right? So for example, maybe some shots of the line outside. If it's a big line outside, people kind of getting their tickets and everything like that. Maybe some close-ups of people buying drinks from the bar. Basically, these kind of intro shots, right? So add a little bit of narrative in there and that's going to basically just create a little bit more of a flow and it's going to create an ease in watching it. And uh, you know, the majority of these videos are one to two minutes. So just adding a little bit of like a 10, 10 to 15 second intro, or maybe even shorter, like a five to 10 second intro with a little bit of narrative like that, like showing the line outside or something can add a huge, huge, uh, you know, impact on your project and overall take it to that next level. Now, next up right now, is gonna be a couple little things to make your edits smoother, to overall make the footage you're capturing smoother. Now, number one would be, uh, obviously, if I've just told you not to bring a gimbal or a uh, you know steady cam, maybe you're thinking to yourself, I've got a pretty lightweight camera jack, like, you know, maybe, maybe you don't know about my camera setup, you know, like, I need a gimbal. <laughs> Trust me, I've got a lightweight setup as well. And I do a couple things to get around this, right? So depending on the layout of the venue, I'll do a few things to add a bit of weight to my camera, right? Because most of the time I like to do freehand. It's just the, the funnest for me. I like to just be running around the club, freehand, everything's simple, not super heavy rig that I'm working with and overall freehand's my favorite. So I do a couple things to improve this experience. Number one, I might pull the camera strap against my neck, right? So I might uh, put the camera strap on the camera, which normally I don't even shoot with the camera strap for obvious reasons, it gets in the way. Uh, and I might actually get the camera strap on my neck and essentially just pull it, you know, so essentially this is creating just a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of force or um, stability between me and the camera. And essentially, you know, pulling it against my neck can create this, uh, you know, steadiness that essentially if I'm shooting at arm's length the entire time with the, 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 the strap pulling against my neck, the camera is definitely getting much smoother than it would be just shaking in your hand uh, when you're running about, right? So that's a very cool little way to do it. And uh, it's a very simple way as well. Uh, you know, you could also add some weight to the camera um, and add weight in whichever way you want to do. Now, there's two ways that have been successful for me to add weight to it. They're both very different though, because one of them is kind of just like putting a gimbal and a steady cam on there, which I kind of feel like a hypocrite saying that now, <laughs> even though it's not a gimbal or a steady cam, but it kind of is like that. But step number one for adding weight to your lightweight camera to kind of get a smoother shot would be to put a plate on there, right? So for example, if you've got a steady cam or a gimbal, I might just put the actual attachment plate on there just to add a little bit of weight to the camera. Not the biggest effect is done when you do this, but definitely it does add a little bit of weight. Method number two is using a 
<laughs> this might sound kind of funny because I just advise you against this sort of stuff, but this is sort of a variation of it is using a gorilla pod, right? Using a gorilla pod or, uh, you know, a very small tripod of sorts, but a gorilla pod works really well because it's flexible and, uh, you know, essentially using a gorilla pod to attach the camera to hold the gorilla pod and the camera can just add another point of contact to the camera, right? So you're holding it with two hands, but not real close. You're holding it kind of out with the gimbal um, or not the gimbal, my bad, the gorilla pod. And essentially that adds a little bit of weight to it. And, uh, you know, you're still basically doing freehand, but it's not as much uh, of an annoyance as like a steady cam or gimbal, but still it's adding a little bit of extra weight to it and a little bit of extra control to it. Overall, just a couple of things that have helped me out to make things smoother. Now, shooting in slow motion, this right here is an amazing thing or a terrible thing. And it really depends on the aperture of your camera. If you're shooting with, you know, uh, an f-stop of 3.5 or above, I probably would not suggest you to do any slow motion. If you're using uh, an aperture of about f 1.8 or below, do it. Hell yeah. Slow motion is a great idea. But the thing is about doing slow motion is the higher the frame rate you go, the less light that is, uh, you know, actually being let in. So if you're doing, you know, regular speed, you're, you're letting, letting in a regular amount of light. If you're doing uh, two times slow motion, you're letting in twice as twice less light, right? You're doing four times slow motion, four times less light. Essentially, it, it's not a good setup if you're in a dark club and you are, uh, you know, using a, a, a lens with the aperture that's not that low, right? So if you are, I probably wouldn't suggest you to do this, but um, if you uh, do have an aperture lens, f1.8 um, or below, do it and screw it. Even if you have an aperture of, uh, you know, anything higher than that, do it, but only do it if there's a sufficient amount of light. For example, I was shooting a venue on the weekend and I was shooting almost everything in slow motion because there's a lot of, uh, you know, light there and everything like that. And just shooting in slow motion gives you more maneuverability and control when you're actually editing in the post-production process. Because, uh, you know, if you're working with footage that's 120 frames a second, um, speeding it up makes it look even doper. Whereas opposed to if you're working with footage that's 30 frames a second, speeding it up does not make it look doper. And at, the, at regular speed, it looks okay as well. But if you're shooting uh, more frames, you've got more available info on your, on your clip there. So when you're doing more to it, it is going to respond nicer in terms of speed manipulation than if you are working with a 30 frames clip, for example, when you're trying to uh, you know, slow it down or increase it and essentially create frames that aren't actually there, it's going to be looking hella choppy and hella weird. So shoot in slow motion if you got a good enough lens. My total conclusion on that. Next up, shooting in flat log picture profile. Shooting in flat log picture profile has been very, very dope for me for uh, one reason, which might not apply to you, but I'm going to put it on here anyways to add the most value to everybody. And that one reason is shooting joint projects, right? So, uh, you know, now I shoot almost all the clubs that I do on my own, but, uh, you know, in the, in the kind of initial starting of my live event videography career, I basically linked up with my homie Noah and we shot almost all the events together. Just, you know, I, I you know, we would essentially get these bookings and then just go to the venue and shoot everything and then come back and then meet up and edit everything together. And we were essentially partners for these, uh, you know, first like 50 events that we did together or something like that. Now we shoot on different cameras. He shoots on the Panasonic GH5. I shoot on the Sony a6300. Both of them handle colors differently. Both of them overall process, uh, you know, colors and footage differently. So this is a problem when you're trying to put clips from two different cameras into the same edit is uh, inevitably there's going to be some uh, inconsistencies with the look of the footage. Flat log picture profile is how we got around this and how if you're doing joint projects with people, this is an amazing way to get around things is I shoot in S log, which is the Sony flat log picture profile and my homie Noah shoots in V log, which is the Panasonic flat log picture profile. Flat log is essentially... Um, you know, just a really flat image, looks pretty gray, but uh, it actually contains loads more information inside of this codec. And you are able to put it, for example, into Premiere or After Effects or wherever you want to put it into. And when you're color grading it, you can do so much more and actually get these colors to be really, really amazing. And because this V-Log and, 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 and S-Log are both pretty neutral, you know, when we're actually color grading them, it creates a much more consistent look between them and everything looks very, very similar opposed to looking like it's been shot on multiple different cameras. Now, next up, 
actually doing a little bit of a motion when coming in to your shot. For example, like if you're shooting an event, right? Uh, you know, uh, I was shooting a drum and bass event this weekend, right? And essentially, I'm not the biggest fan of drum and bass, but what I would do to get some really dope shots of the DJ really going crazy is instead of just waiting till, uh, you know, it looked like he was having a fun time or whatever, I would listen out to the big drops coming in, right? And this is something that I do. I listen out to the kind of buildup of the song, and when it sounds like it's about to really, really heavily drop, I start recording a few seconds before and I aim the camera away so I can swing it on when it actually drops and I usually record these shots in slow motion. So essentially, I'll be playing some shots on screen right now that'll show you exactly what I'm talking about if you, uh, you know, if I'm not explaining it too well, but essentially what I do is start recording and as soon as I hear the song is about to drop, I flick the camera in. So uh, with, with slow motion, I speed this bit up so that it looks like it just flies on, whether it flies on from the ceiling, right? So I'll be pointing the camera at the ceiling and then just smash it down for the drop onto the DJ, or I'll be filming from the side. Again, swipe the camera onto this, uh, you know, on to actually shoot the DJ on beat. And of course, because I come in on beat, um, this is where the actual beat drops. So the DJ is usually going pretty crazy when I actually slide on, and it makes for a really dope, uh, you know, quick transition onto this, uh, you know, very dope shot, which is kind of a prime shot if the DJ is actually performing well. But overall, that right there is just another little tip on how to kind of get some nicer shots and nicer angles and stuff. And Finally, my final piece of advice to you, just to create the most natural crowd you can, would be to only use an LED light if you have to, right? So LED light, I haven't shot a club with an LED light in over a year now, uh, easily over a year now. Probably the last club that I shot with the LED light was, I wanna probably say maybe like March or something like that, or like, um, not of 2018 as well, of 2017, so over a year. <laughs> um, you know, I really only shot maybe 10 of the first events, if even maybe five to 10 events with a LED light until inevitably I figured out that the crowd really doesn't like having a super bright light in their face. And uh, overall, it did kind of sacrifice the reaction of the crowd for, uh, you know, a better lit up shot. But if the subject, which is lit up, yeah, because you got the big light on it. Um, but if, that's, if that subject is not performing well in front of the camera and giving you a dope shot, then it's essentially a waste of, uh, you know, uh, uh, equipment and you may as well just be shooting it without the bright light and overall creating a more authentic genuine reaction from whoever you're actually filming whether it be a DJ or the crowd and uh, either way you don't want to be pissing off the DJ you don't want to be pissing off the crowd when you're shooting overall you want everybody to be nice natural and having a fun time and uh, shooting with an LED light in my experience is a way to just annoy people uh, whether it be a DJ or the crowd so Thank you guys for watching this, how to actually shoot better videos if you're uh, out there shooting live events, whether it be a venue or a nightclub. Overall, I really hope I provided some value. Tell me in the comment section if I did, I really like to hear which bit was the most helpful to people, you know what I mean? So I can go about talking about that more in the future, you know what I mean? But essentially, I am going to link on screen right now to a live event video, which is, uh, you know, breaking down loads more tips and tricks to shoot live events. That will start playing right after this, but this is part of the live event videography masterclass, so the full playlist is linked down below in the description as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day, and goodbye.